Your resting heart rate is one of the simplest numbers you can track and one of the most powerful. It's like a window into how your body is really doing. Not just your fitness, but your recovery, your stress, your sleep, and your health. And I never used to pay attention to it until I realized it was quietly telling me everything I needed to know about my training, how well I was adapting, and when I needed to rest. So in this video, I'll show you how to understand what your resting heart rate is actually telling you and how you can use it to train smarter, recover better, and feel your best. My resting heart rate has been 51, and today it's 37. But this video isn't about chasing my numbers or someone else's. It's about understanding what your resting heart rate actually means and how you can use it to support your health and performance. As a coach, I get asked all the time, is mine too high? Can I lower it? Why does it go up even when I'm training more? So I made this video to give you clarity. What's normal, what it's connected to, and how to improve it in a way that supports long-term fitness, not just short-term results. I'll share the science, my personal experience as a marathon runner training for the 2028 Olympics, and what I've learned from coaching many, many runners. So your resting heart rate, or RHR, is the number of times your heart beats per minute when you're completely at rest. The best time to measure it right after waking up. So before you get out of bed, I usually go into my Garmin and look under the heart rate section and there you'll see your current heart rate inside the wheel and your resting heart rate displayed just underneath it. And Garmin calculates resting heart rate using your lowest heart rate during sleep or during restful wakefulness. And it averages these over time. So it's a reliable trend not just a single number from one day. And if you go into your heart rate graph, you might even spot a lower number occasionally. And I've seen mine dip to 33, which was kind of wild. But even then, I personally choose to journal my actual resting heart rate as Garmin displays it, since that's what reflects the long-term trend, not just one low spike for that particular night. So for most people, a healthy resting heart rate is between 60 and 80 beats per minute. And for a trained endurance athlete, it's often lower, even in the 40s or 30s, because the heart is more efficient. It can pump more blood with fewer beats. But here is what matters. Your resting heart rate isn't just about fitness. It also reflects how your body is handling stress, sleep, recovery, fueling, illness, or inflammation. So instead of obsessing over one number, look at it as a trend. Is your body adapting well or is it sending you signals to slow down? I've never set out to lower my resting heart rate, meaning that wasn't the goal. It's a metric I started paying attention to as I got deeper into understanding performance, recovery, and overall health. And once I began to track it, I noticed that mine dropped significantly when I started doing a few key things differently. Not by accident, but as a byproduct of training and living smarter. Here's what helped me bring my resting heart rate from 51 to 37 gradually and in a way that supports performance. Number one is training smarter. I stopped chasing paces and focused on heart rate training, but more importantly, I stopped rushing the process. If you know my story, you know I'm extremely ambitious. I went from running a 3.05 marathon to a 2.46 marathon in just seven months, all while working two jobs and applying to grad school. It was a huge achievement, but it wasn't sustainable. And when I switched to heart rate training and focused on time on feet instead of pace or distance, everything changed for me. I started using proper periodization, building my base slowly, managing stress, and respecting recovery. And now I use specific heart rate targets, often more precise in traditional zones. So for example, I'll aim for 140 BPN on one run and 125 on another, depending on the purpose of that session. And this allows me to train with intent and recover fully. And that shift is exactly what I built into my training plans. So runners can build endurance, reduce injury risk, and actually enjoy the process of getting faster without burning out. So I will leave a link to all of my running plans below in the description. Number two, prioritizing sleep. So I started getting seven to eight hours of quality sleep consistently. Sleep is where recovery happens and it's when your heart rate naturally drops. But it's not just about 
the sleep. Rest in general, whether it's a day off running, a shorter run, or simply downtime away from work and screens plays a huge role in lowering your resting heart rate. When I started respecting my rest days and not filling them with stressful or overly active recovery, that's when I noticed my resting heart rate stabilized and trended lower. So sleep is one form of recovery, but holistic rest, including mental and emotional recharge, is what really allows your heart and your body to reset. And if sleep is something that you are working on, I actually made an entire video called How to Sleep Better as a Runner, where I share all my personal tips and what made the biggest difference for me. So I'll link it right up here. And one surprising thing, I now sleep slightly less, but because I focus on the quality, my recovery has improved. So if you're thinking, how can I even control sleep quality, then check out that video because I'll break it all down. Third thing that I've done to lower my resting heart rate is managing stress. So I learned that stress isn't just mental, it shows up in your heart rate. And the biggest shift for me was removing things from my to-do list. So if you're anything like me, you're a go-getter with a billion things on your plate. And I used to pack every hour with tasks, responsibilities, and pressure. But learning to prioritize myself, my health, my energy, that honestly completely transformed my life. Now I check in before adding to my to-do list. I ask myself, does this support my goals or is it draining me? And I'm so passionate about this topic that I'm building a business around it. One that values rest, intentional smart work, and throws hustle culture out the window. And you guys, you don't need to meditate for an hour, even just five to 10 minutes a day of intentional calm, walking or breath work, journaling, or simply just sitting quietly can shift your nervous system. I notice it almost immediately when I'm consistent. I'm less stressed and that lowers my resting heart rate. So we're talking daily habits like breath work, journaling, or simply just giving myself 10 minutes where nothing is scheduled that's made a big difference for me. Number four is fueling and hydration. So under fueling and dehydration both elevate heart rate. But so does low quality fuel. Once I started treating food as recovery, not just fuel, my heart rate honestly stabilized, even during peak training. These days, I really focus on the quality of my foods. So when possible, I try to choose whole, minimally processed meals that actually support my training, my hormones, my recovery, and overall health, instead of obsessing over calories or numbers. I usually ask myself if this food is going to help me feel strong, energized, and satisfied. And this shift is something that's really helped me from this mindset of being restrictive to supportive, not just in my performance, but in how my body feels and responds under load. And the same goes for hydration. Even mild dehydration makes your heart work harder. So I make sure I'm hydrating throughout the day, not just around workouts, and I keep an eye on electrolytes as well. Number five is being consistent. I feel like we've all heard this a thousand times, but this lowering of my heart rate didn't just happen in a week. And this is a reminder that consistency doesn't mean doing more. It means showing up in the right ways again and again. To me, consistency means not being hard on yourself if you've had a stressful day but instead choosing to say no to that late social hour with alcohol and getting to bed early. It means doing what you can to make the next day less busy, prioritizing your recovery, and not just squeezing more in. It means realizing that in the long run, you're only hurting yourself by making excuses or convincing yourself that adding more is the answer. Consistency is about choosing quality and intention over pressure and overload. And it took me months of consistent aerobic work, recovery, and good habits to see that change. One important thing that I want you to understand is that your resting heart rate doesn't just steadily go down as you get fitter. It naturally fluctuates. So there will be days when it's higher and that doesn't mean you've lost fitness. Mine often goes down when I've had more rest or lower overall life stress. And it usually goes up when I'm in a hard training block traveling, poorly fueled, or even fighting something off. And that's why it's so important to look at the trend, not the daily number. So I use my resting heart rate graph to monitor how I'm adapting. So if I see an upward trend for multiple days, I take it as a cue 
to pull back or at least check in on my sleep, my fueling and overall load. And as a coach, I also have my athletes log their resting heart rate and it helps me adjust their training based on the full picture. So how they feel is always number one, what their data says and whether their recovery is trending in the right direction. So what's a healthy resting heart rate? Again, like I said earlier, for most adults, it's gonna be between 60 and 80, that's totally fine. And if you're an endurance athlete or consistently training, you may be in the 40s or 50s. But what matters most is your trend, not one reading. And if you've noticed it creeping up over time, it might mean that you're under recovered and that's a cue to look at your intensity as that's the biggest reason people are struggling to recover in my experience. It might be because you're stressed or your body needs a break. So I recommend tracking it daily and watching for patterns, especially during heavy training blocks or travel. One thing that surprises many runners is how sensitive resting heart rate is to illness. So often one of the first signs that you're getting sick is a higher resting heart rate, even before other symptoms show up. When I've seen my resting heart rate trend upwards for a few days Days in a row, even with no major training changes, it's often been my body fighting something off. And if this happens, I rest. Because the key is to adjust as early as possible to shorten your sickness period and avoid making things worse. So if one of my athletes reports elevated resting heart rate and low energy, we adjust their training until we get a clearer picture. So combining their data with how they feel. And your heart rate is part of the story, so listen to it. And if you want a full video on how I approach running while sick or coming back from illness, then let me know in the comments because I'd also love to make that video for you. So what can you do to improve your resting heart rate? Here's a quick summary of what made the biggest difference for me and what I now build into my coaching and training plans to help runners train smarter. Number one is to train with intention using specific heart rate targets and time, not pace to avoid overtraining and improve aerobic development. So I will leave a link in the description to my plans. Number two is gonna be sleep consistently and prioritize quality. Even slightly less sleep can be effective if the quality is high through a consistent bedtime. Number three is gonna be to manage stress by removing unnecessary tasks and giving yourself unscheduled time to decompress. Number four is gonna be to fuel and hydrate well with nutrient dense, whole foods, and enough calories to support recovery and health. And number five is going to be to take rest seriously. Your body will tell you when to pull back and honoring that is seriously so important for long-term success. So your resting heart rate, it's not something to fear. It's something to learn from. It gives you feedback on how your body is adapting and how your training and lifestyle are working together. So if you want to improve it, focus on the basics, train smart, sleep well, recover fully. And let me know in the comments, what's your current resting heart rate? And if you want a heart rate based training plan that actually works, then check out the link in the description for my training plans. Anything between a 5K and the marathon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. And if you're curious how to sleep better as a runner, make sure to watch this video next.